Michael, huge congratulations. It's a victory on opening night of the Grand Slam of Darts. The form you're in, you must be over the moon right now. Uh, yeah, especially playing Lisa then. It was, it's not something we used to maybe do it to, well, so I think it's in this tournament. Really. I played Lisa in Germany and she beat me. And then like now, we don't play many women, but without being rude, I don't think Lisa is a woman in that, that sense of fact. She, she could play darts better than any any one of us here, and when she's on, she's on. So I'm glad that I just, when I had a chance, I took it every single time. I didn't miss. My scoring was on point, but my finishing was. Your group's been dubbed one of the groups of death. What was your thoughts on it when it came out? Obviously, players that are all playing so so well at the moment. Uh, for me, I was glad just to get Lisa out of the way late tonight. Now, because I just said she was my hardest game in my mind. She was my hardest game, and. My next two games, I can concentrate and I can be myself. Tonight, I just, I know it's a darts match and I know it's, it should all be equal, but I'm playing Lisa, I can't give it the big and all that stuff, can I? So, I was just, I was being respectful in the same, in the same sense of my, and English and tab, but I'm trying to get there. <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, going, going into the next two games, I'm really looking forward to, I can be myself and yeah, just, just get on with it now. Because if I would have lost that first game, Playing with Tyski and Jose, knowing that I've got to win them both, it gives me some leeway now. So I know I don't. I want to win. I want obviously I want to win them both, but I don't have to if I don't need to. Have you had time to reflect on the last few days? Obviously, back to back titles in the summer series, back in the winning circle. We saw what it meant to you on the day. Have you had time to reflect on that? Um, yeah, because I got beat really early on in the next week. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I don't, I'm quite glad that I haven't had time to reflect because it took me two and a half years to do it. And if I sit down and think about it and then maybe I just lose all that focus I've been getting for the last three or four weeks into really intense practice. So coming straight in, straight in fresh to a new tournament, knowing that I am playing a lot better than I was a month ago, maybe two months ago. I'm scoring well, my doubles finally are going in. Probably just jinxed myself, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, doubles. Um, my finishing in these last what ten days, maybe they've been on point. I'm, I'm not pulling the tops as much as I used to. I'm not dragging it so low and then having to rely on double ten. It's going straight in the centre of bed every single time. So yeah, I'm really pleased with them. And I'm glad I've not had the time off. I'm straight fresh into a new tournament. Well, it's my pleasure as always, mate. Thanks very much, lad. Cheers, lad. Hi, Michael. Congratulations on that result tonight. Um. That conversation it was spoken about on on Sky tonight about after the World Cup final, uh, which you lost. What what was that conversation? Why did you feel there was something good ha- going to happen? Uh, for me, it's just because I wasn't playing. Like you all know, I wasn't playing the best darts. I've been struggling for probably since we come back from the Premier League when we was in lockdown. I've been been struggling to find my scoring's been there. I've been struggling to find the last six darts of a game. Like I can easily go 140, 140, and then 60, 60, 60. Instead of clear, I think I lost my timing more than anything. I think it's just been in lockdown. We're not playing competitive darts. We're not doing anything. And coming straight back into it and having so many tournaments, it was hard to <clears throat> just to get used to like not playing online and not like now I'm doing it here. I'm talking to a screen and trying to throw. I just knew after that World Cup, it was just something in me. I had to dig myself out of an hole. I had to try to dig Rob out of an hole as well. And I think I showed you I was fighting for everything I was hitting. Well, not, not everything, but I was hitting most things that I went for. And I was trying to... It wasn't for me. And coming into the, the Winter Series, I was like, well, you've just shown you can do it for someone else. Why not try it once for yourself? And then the first day, everything just felt right. And second day, a bit nervous because I was like, I've never done back-to-back ever. But once I, once I got to the semis and I had the... I think one for the match against Vincent. As soon as I clicked that ball, I said, no one's beating me today. I'm getting that back to back. And yeah, it's just, it just fell into place at the right time. And just three massive tournaments coming up. So I'm glad it has. Yeah. I must ask you as well, finally, um, you've been away from home a lot, but to those amazing videos that your wife puts up of the, of the boys when they're, they're seeing you. And when you're away and they, you see them celebrate you winning the Winter Series like that, winning the events, it must give you a massive boost. Yeah, when it, it's weird because like <clears throat> normal people I go to bed and watch like I don't know like ITV or normal TV and stuff. I just go to bed and watch fil- uh, videos of my kids because there's that many now. She posts them online every single day. But 
no, it's it's something we have to deal with and get on with. It's I can cry and I can do everything saying it's not right. We should be at home. We should, but it's not. It's work. And if you had a normal nine to five job, I only you go to bed at eight nine o'clock. So I only see three hours a day anyway. But I'm doing here. <laughs> they all look. My kids are crazy on darts. And I think they love me being away because they get to watch me on TV and I love playing and I love knowing my kids are always going to be secure if I play well and they never have to go and worry about a thing. Good stuff, Listen, thanks for your time, Michael. Well done tonight. Yeah, cheers, brother. Michael, congratulations on the win tonight. Um, how close do you feel you are to your top form at the moment? I don't feel like I'm very far away. I feel if my doubles keep going the way they are, my, scoring's, my scoring never disappeared. Even the, like I said before about the Premier League, in that I was banging all the scoring, it was just my finishing. And if, if finally just once, if it clicks together, finishing and scoring, because I'm either good at one and rubbish at the other. So as long as it clicks in together, I'm, I'm not how far I reckon another four days. <laughs> no, no, no. I just reckon it, it's, it's coming, it's coming. And hopefully I can carry it on through this tournament, the players, and then the big one at the end of the year. That's eight consecutive group stage wins in the Grand Slam since 2017. You seem to really relish this um, round robin format. Apart from the World Championship, this is the best tournament in the world. I, I just love it. I love the, the fast pace, and because of my fast pace, I love getting out the block straight away. And you see me, you see me in long matches like <clears throat> I don't know the match play final. Well, I really slow start because I know I've got loads of time. But in this one, I know I've got to get off and keep going and fight. I just love it. I love the I love the fast pace and. Growing up playing, it was always best of five. And in the local time, it was first, first of three. And you couldn't afford to lose a leg. And it's the same here. You can't afford to lose one, maybe two legs. So you've got to keep going. Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Michael. Well done, Ty. Yes, well. Oh, can you talk about your, your love for the group stage in this tournament? Are you a little bit disappointed? Obviously, we know the situation, but you're not going to be in Wolverhampton this year. Um, well... I don't think it makes any difference. For me, Civic Hall made the Grand Slam. And once we left there, it felt weird because the Civic Hall, it was it's like the match player that sat on top of you. There's, there's, you don't have an inch to yourself because you're right on top of you. And once we left there, it felt weird. But obviously, it's still the same tournament. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's not bad. I don't, don't get why people say it's different about the crowds. Yes, we'd love them be here, but we're still playing for that one thing and that's to set the trophy home. So, if you can't get up for winning... I don't know what the prize money is, 100 and some thousand and the trophy. If you can't get up for that, stop playing. And it's the same. I've, I want to win and I want to win every match. doesn't matter. No crowd, what stadium or what venue, whatever, as long as I'm playing, I'm happy. I know you mentioned it earlier in the interview, but um, just on Lisa Ashton, she's obviously had some, some time on the tour now. Does it feel like you're just playing a, a regular tour player rather than you're playing a woman now? No. <laughs> no. Uh, no, she's... I know Trina's won, I don't know how many world titles, nine or ten. She is the best ever dart player, women's dart player to pick up a dart. And it's weird calling her women's dart players. Like, like I said before, she, for me, she's not a woman. The way she plays and the way she does it, she's, she can compete with anyone. And that was the most nerd. Like, when you play a nerd, there's a fact of getting beat by a woman, even though people won't listen to how good she is and what she does. But yeah, there's a fact of losing to a woman and losing... It's like pride, basically, but she's amazing. That's why she's number one in the world, women, and I think no one, no one can play like she can.